How you doing, YouTube? <laughs> Man, I should leave that in there. No, the devil. Oh, fuck. <laughs> How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review with Bradley. The infamous. Infamous. Yes. Or unfamous. Whatever you yeah. want to call it. Anyway, we're doing a bunch of beer reviews tonight. This is, uh, this is, uh, something up with my crack for a little bit. I got it on a trip not too long ago. And, um, yeah, really excited to give it a roll. So, let's see what she's got on the bottle. It is a, um, basically what this is, I've done one before I did, and I used to, I was just saying Zinamore, it's actually Zymator, so all you, or Zymator, yes, yeah. um, all you name Nazis, you can fucking yell at me, because I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, anyway. It's an OEC. It's an OEC, 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 Be United, Rebarrel Project. Basically what it is, they take beers that were produced, they take them out, they barrel age them. The way their they own way, them. yeah, and then rebottle them. This is a uh, Cuvée Angelique. Uh, this is a base beer for this batch. Was Brewery de Glazen Torrens Cuvée Angelique, which is a Belgian strong dark. Uh, the beer is matured for two point five years in Channing Daughters Ramado and Ransom Spirits whiskey. I'm not sure what that is whiskey wise. Hopefully, it's mm -hmm. not that peat smoky douchebaggy stuff that comes in an eye lay. And Pinot Noir barrels. Um, let's see. Um, batch number 100514, uh, it says serve in a red wine glass, no, um, uh, Cuvée Angelique Ale <laughs> aged in oak barrels, on the back here we have unfilterized, unpasteurized, and bottled condition, this is, uh, Zimitor Project is journey in the land of spontaneous and exploration of the aromas and flavors that can be created by the maturation of great products from all over the world, and used barrels from outstanding small producers and wine spirits. Worlds and Patience for more information, yada, yada, yada. That's pretty much it. So, yeah. Belgian Strong Dark, aged in whiskey barrels and Pinot Noir barrels. Um, first off, label-wise. The label's, like, really ghetto. It's, like, almost like they printed out in, like, a like a bubble jet printer. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of, like, stained and, like, if you get it wet, it gets all fucked up. And I love it. And the shape of it, to everything about it, it's fucking beautiful. It's a wine bottle. It, 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 you know, it's like not even a wine bottle. It's, like... No, but it really, they, it's, 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 I think they just use wine bottles. But it, no, but even that yeah, no. shit, I don't know, something about it just tickles my balls. My balls get all tingly and stuff when I see this bottle. So yeah, a little bit of a hiss. I did one other of their beers, which was their Zimitor, um JW Lee's. And while I really like that, and everything happened, my butthole got tight, my balls tingled and all that euphemism shit my titties got hard and all that fun stuff it was lack of carbonation this is not which gets yeah. me really excited again belgian strong dark to begin with that does not look like a belgian strong dark that looks more like a doubleish kind of body to me a uh, yeah. nice khaki colored head a little north khaki nice creaminess to it nice like, haze the subtle haze to it look you can see through decent carbonation you, have, you, you can see through but it's shaky so yeah you know so yeah it looks like it has a decent more carbonation than uh, the last one. I guess yeah. it smells like barrels of Pinot Noir. Oh, yeah. Very, very, very wine <laughs> forward. <laughs> but yes, I'm not getting any very whiskey. Very bright, white, grape, tannic, a yeah. bit of acidity there. I mean, it smells like wine. Yes. There's, um, no, there's, no, there's no whiskey on it right now. Matt I has not go that far. Matt has a better nose than I I wouldn't do. go that far. Um, very subtle whiskey notes in the background because you get a little bit of that kind of like uh, a little touch, touch, touch of caramel, and I actually do get the base beer in there too because wine's not for me. No, yeah. But when I smell this, I think I'm gonna like it. So that's that's how I know it's not just all wine because I'm I know it's not being like oh fuck I'm smelling going okay this is a lot of wine but there's still beer elements in there. You're getting some malt, a little bit of caramel, but it is absolutely. Pinot Noir oh, yeah. in your face. So let's dive in Cheers. and see if it's worth it. See, I like it. Some blow me away, but I like it. I think, I mean... I think the beer's too small for the barrel. Yeah, like you're totally losing the Belgian dark. If it was, that's... I, I mean, I haven't had the base beer, so I can't get into it and split hairs here. I mean, usually Belgian darks have more of a robust flavor, more of that, almost like the dark candy sugars mm -hmm. and stuff like that. If that was the base, then the barrel really broke it down. 
because yeah. you're, I mean, a lot of nice wine notes, you know, a little bit of whiskey, not much on my end, but... Yeah, it looks like it, it wasn't a Belgian dark. Like, it looks like it was something less in body and less in flavor that was put into a barrel. Mm hmm You know, it didn't hold up as well as I thought it would. But, I mean, it, it's it's tasty. You know, what actually, <laughs> you know what it actually tastes like to me? It tastes... <coughs> excuse me. It tastes like it was a Belgian dark, but when they went to put it in the Pinot Noir barrels, they forgot there was about maybe a liter of wine left in it. To where the wine kind yeah. of diluted the beer itself, as opposed to the barrel taking over to where it's almost like blended with wine. Yeah. Um, like a, it's like a beer blended with wine. So you had a dark at one point, but now it's been blended so much with wine, it diluted it and made it lighter and made it not as robust. The, 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 the one that like is jumping to mind, and I haven't had it in a while, so excuse me, internets, if I screw this <laughs> up and send all your hate mail to Matt. But like... Was it, is it Southern here that has, like, Plum Noir? Yes. I it it so. kind of has that feel to it. Like, I haven't had their beer in a while. The last time I did, I was down in uh, Easton having a good meal, and it was on draft, so I would have And, uh, what's your call? Maximum 22. Oh, I thought you were talking about when I told you to go to No, that. no, that, this was before that. I was at Maximum 22 by the Cradle of the Crayon Factory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, it, but it has that feel to it. But that was one that was meant to be, like, taste like a noir. Mm -hmm. Like, that was meant to be that. They named it Plum Noir. Like, so, yeah, I'm getting, like, a mix between that and, like, Sandy Claus. Yeah, it's a weird one, man. It's like, um, it's just, it to me, this taste of, of, of not knowing balance in the beer. Not, I'm not trying to shit on a company because, obviously, they have a huge conglomerate. They probably know infinitely more than I do. But it tastes like they're figuring out balancing. Yeah. And it just tastes like there's way too much wine barrel in this. It's it remi Actually, it reminds me of uh, uh, Schneider and Sons Aventinas did a um, Pinot Noir barrel of Aventinas that was okay. way more actually wine than this to the point where it was almost like sour. Um, yeah. I, and you're getting sour notes on this too. I mean, you really are. Yeah. Uh, I had the one that Matt reviewed before, which I believe was the J.W. Lee's with Shambushin Grapes Must or something. I forget. That was the other OEC that Matt did, so go back. Mm -hmm. so go backwards, and that's what Matt had. I came down later in that evening after he did it, and so I thought the lack of carbonation when I had that was just because he had an open bottle that was sitting in his refrigerator. Yeah. But, uh... Like that one, it, it was it was different because it was like you still had Harvest Ale, like it, which, yes. like, which which I've had a, a hundred times. Like I've had a lot of Harvest Ales from J W Lee's, so it's like you still knew it was J W Lee's, but that little bit of the grape must in the barrel like added to it, yeah. so you were like enhancing it. Where this doesn't taste like a Belgian strong at all no. to me. And it's just like, it's like you took the two of them and combined them to make something new. Yeah. It's like, uh, if you ever watch any, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not a huge fan of reality shows, but one, I am an addict for cooking reality shows. And if you ever watch a re cooking reality show, um, what happens is a lot of times when the person cooks, sometimes they'll ask them to make a dish and they'll be like the dishes, whatever, scallops, and they'll do something so crazy that the scallops are like not the start of the dish anymore. It's like third or fourth down the line. And they'll be like... Tastes good. I like this. I think it tastes good. Yeah. But I don't taste scallop. Do you know what I mean? It's not the star of the show. The beer that is supposed to be in the bottle just isn't the star of the show anymore. No, I'm, it's I'm like, missing it. Like there's no Belgian dog yeah, in there. Yeah. So it, it, it's a good beer. While I like it, <laughs> it tastes good. It's you know it, it's not like reading this label. Not that I want it to style because what kind of style would this fucking be? Because who fucking knows? But it's just it's just missing that mark. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm doing a whole non-rating thing and just talking up here. Would I drink this again? Yes. Would I buy this again? No. Um, I'm not a big wine guy, so it kind of yeah. jumps the shark. I mean, plus it was a bit pricey. I think I paid 22, 23 bucks for this bottle. Um, or 20 bucks, I think. Um, and re I probably retailed, usually they come in not that expensive, actually, from OEC, but I bought it from a bottle shop. Um... So I wouldn't really buy it again um, unless somebody was like a super wine person coming to my house and I wanted to bring a beer for them. 
Um, and then just go to the whole value availability. It's usually in-house only. You might see these sprinkled about shops in North um, in upstate New York, but your miles may vary. And skip to if you like what we like this. If you're trying to get somebody into beer, yeah, who drinks wine, a wine drinker into beer. Um, if you like sours, you know, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get. It's not an over-the-top pucker sour, but it has those characteristics, and I think that's more the wine characteristics mm-hmm. that you see. Within, I mean, because a lot of sours are using champagne yeast and wine yeast and that. Like, yeah. They, I mean, and they're they're in oak barrels and they're in this. So I mean, you know, if if you're into that style, even like the, your traditional, you know, Flanders red, Flanders brune, you know, that's you can go into this. But I would say this is a great gateway if you had somebody that was in, into wine. Hey, I got something and, for and you. And flip the flip the script totally. How would I enjoy this more? If this was sandwiched in a fucking seven course meal, and I was going from like a fucking media appetizer into some kind of other gamey kind of food, I think I'd think totally different than this beer. Because I'm not a big wine person, but I get I get the pairing thing. And I think if, if this was paired with the correct food, it would fucking work for me. But that's just me. I said overall, I like it. Would I, would I pay twenty four dollars? Probably. Nope. Not. So there you go. Another review in the box. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did or you didn't, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff below. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, untapped. Me, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. If you want to check me out anywhere else, if you want to check out Brad. Uh, Instagram, Meat Smoke 451. Yeah, give him the Meat Smoke, baby. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice secondary barrel something or other. Yeah. And five five barrels, new flavor. And hope to see you next time. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.